what it is, what it do. You already know who it is back again with another episode of Keeper of Reality, Act 1. Before I begin, I just want to say thank you to the new subscribers and people who have been viewing the channel. It really means a lot to me to see the incoming support I've been getting, and it makes doing this worthwhile. If you guys want to share the channel to get more people interested, I'd really appreciate that. And a good way to do that is just by liking the video and making sure to watch all the way through because that helps YouTube rec that helps YouTube send out the video to more people to get more people to come on by. And I've also heard the announcements for Doki Doki Plus coming out. I only found out about that like maybe one to two days ago. And yes, I do plan on playing Doki Doki Plus as soon as it comes out. So if you all are excited for that, let me know because. The game actually looks really good based on what I've seen. But before we get to that, we have to take care of Keeper Reality first, so I'm gonna try to play as much of this as I can before um, Doki Doki Plus comes out. And with that being said, if you guys are excited for the next installment of Keeper Reality, be sure to hit the like button and stay tuned. And last we left off was. We were, Monica and I were, were going to go to Sayori's house, so let's see how that goes. Yeah. Well, I don't mind it. She smiles and takes out her notebook. I do the same. She reads mine while humming. Maybe I'm repeating what Yuri and Natsuki said, but the message here is very clear. Everything in exaggeration is bad, pride and humility included. Here's mine. I found this one very intriguing. Push the cow. A wise teacher was passing through the forest with his faithful disciple when he saw a poor, a poor looking place in the distance and decided to pay a brief visit. During the walk, he told the apprentice about the importance of knowing places and people and about the learning opportunities that these experiences offer us. The house is made of wood and its inhabitants. A couple and their three children wore dirty and torn clothes and were barefoot. The teacher approached the man, apparently the father of the family, and asked, In this place, there are no job opportunities or commercial points. How can you and your family survive? The man replied calmly, My friend, we have a cow that gives us several liters of milk every day. We sell part of the milk or exchange it for other food in a neighboring city and with the rest we make cheese, curd, and other products for our consumption. This is how we survive. The wise man appreciated the information and contemplated the place for a moment, before saying goodbye and leaving. Halfway there, he ordered his faithful disciple, find the cow, take it, take it to the cliff, and push it. The young man looked at him terrified and asked that this, and replied that this animal was the family's means of, subs of, subs of subsistence. When he pers when he perceived the absolute silence of the teacher, he carried out the order. He pushed the cow into the ravine and saw her die. That scene was etched into his memory. One day, the, the disciple decided to abandon everything he had learned and return to that place to tell the truth to the family and ask for their forgiveness. He did so, and as he approached, he, he saw everything very beautiful, different as he remembered it. He felt sad. Imagine that this humble family had to sell their land to survive. He quickened his pace, and upon arrival, he was greeted by a very nice man, whom he asked about the people who lived in that place four years ago. The man replied that they were still there. Shocked, the young man ran into the house to confirm that it was the same family that that had visited some years before with the teacher. He praised the place and asked the man, the owner of the cow, How did you improve this place and change your life? Excited, the man replied, we had a cow that fell off a cliff and died. From then on, we found ourselves in need. We found ourselves in a need to do other things and develop other skills that we did not know we had. Thus, we achieved the success that your eyes see now. Oh, so it's a story about complacency, and when you're no longer able to be complacent, you have to come up with new ways to survive. Okay, I see the message they're trying to go for here. I can respect that. Oh, forgive me. Can you see what it's about, Kellen? It's about the comfort zone. 
We are so satisfied with the state of things that surround us that we do not develop other possibilities. We are just in need of we just need a surprise event to realize the security that that security can be our worst advisor and prevents us from seeing the horizon. Huh. Impressive, Monica. You you think so? I think I might be I think I may just be rambling. That's fine. If you say so. I smile. I'm glad we could talk quietly like this. Huh? Are you having problems with the girls? Not really problems. It's just we can't talk normally. We just couldn't talk normally today. So I guess I'm a little down about that. I don't think they have something against you, Killan. They're just being a little weird. Not like Monica question mark or Kanika. I might I'm gonna use Kanika and Monica question mark interchangeably here. Not like Kanika has something to do about that. <laughs> And a little messed up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kanika. You think so? Yeah, maybe something personal is happening to them. Huh, 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 huh. I see. Monica smiles at me. This is Sayori's house. Oh, I see. And that's mine. Would you like me to pay you a little visit? What? <laughs> I'm just kidding. N not really, though. Let's see how Sayori is doing. Yeah. <laughs> Monica's like, oh, would you like me to come inside? We can see Sayori later. <laughs> Sayori! Are you awake? Sayori? Killin? Oh, you came with Monica too. Hey, we came to see how you're doing. Eh, <laughs> thanks. I'm okay. I was just a little tired. Don't stay outside. You can come in. If you say so. Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry. Here. Huh? I hand her the notes. This is what we wrote today. Maki-sensei told me to give it to you. Oh, thank you, Killan. I think tomorrow I will return normally. That would be nice. The club wasn't the same without you. Killan... <laughs> Monica... <laughs> Monica's like, How dare you be nice to her! Don't be nice to her! She doesn't deserve you to be nice to her! <laughs> <laughs> Kanika. Ahem. <clears throat> and the Sarge smiles adorably. We keep talking for a while. It seems that Sayori is better now. I don't feel that gloom from yesterday. However, I think I'm forgetting something. Maybe it's not that important. It is important, but don't worry about that. Well, we may get to that later. Hopefully, anyway. I'm tired. I guess I'll go home now. It's getting a little late. I will go home now. Oh, okay. See you tomorrow at the club then, Killen. Let me just F with Sayori some more while you, when you leave. <laughs> Bye, Killen. I wave goodbye and leave Monica and Sayori. This is a very dangerous thing to do, my friend. Do you want some snacks, Monica? That would be lovely. Okay, I'll be I'll be back then. Oh god, I'm scared. <laughs> oh no! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> as soon as they're alone together, I was like, this is not gonna end well. I I could already tell. Oh god. Also, I thought we were going home. Why are we here? Unless this is just transitioning from last day to the new day. Hmm. Somehow I somehow I woke up in the middle of the night. I'm thirsty. Hmm. I see that Sayori's room light is on. Is Sayori awake? I'll call her just in case. 
she's not. Oh, hello, Kellen. Hey, did I wake you? Did, did I wake you up? Ah, uh, no. Don't worry. That doesn't sound convincing. <laughs> Are you okay, Sayori? She doesn't say anything. <laughs> That's worrying. Yeah, I'm okay. Huh. I'm coming over. Wait, what? I hang up the phone and put on a jacket. He's like, nope, nope, not having it. Ah. Then I head to Sayori's house. It was just like that time. Wait, what, what time? She's hiding something. I can feel it. I have known her long enough to know that something isn't right. Well, at least he's not that dense. I reach Sayori's house and knock on her door. I'm not going to barge in like before. Nothing. Then a text message comes in. You can enter. Oh, the, the, the text message was all I needed to be able to go inside? I enter the house and go upstairs to her room. Her door is closed, but I can see the light in her room. I gently open the door. And Sayori is there on her bed. Oh, wow. This is cute. It's kind of the same it's kind of the same dealy as before, but this is Oh, this is is a cute picture, I guess. The Sayori is quote unquote fine for now. Uh we'll, we'll we'll see how this goes. She gives me a tender smile with a little blush. Sorry, it, it's a little dis disorganized. Hasn't it always been like that? We both laugh softly. I take a chair and sit beside her. So, why are you up at this hour? Also, he said the light in her room was on, but it's dark in her room. And it looks like the only light coming in the room is from the hallway, from the door leading into the hallway, but whatever. She hugs her pillow to hide her sad expression. I had a nightmare. A horrible one. Oh. I was all alone. No, I wasn't alone. You were sleeping by my side, but you weren't waking up. No matter how much I moved you or screamed at you, you wouldn't wake. I thought I lost you. And then... The dark thing appeared. Tears welled up in her eyes. No! I don't want to remember it. I fear that if I sleep again, I, s I will see the same nightmare. And I will lose you again. Sayori. Don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. I take her hand. I'll stay here until you fall asleep. But... No buts. Okay. Even with her reluctance, she shows me a cute smile and covers herself with blankets. I sit on the bed and hold her hand tight. Hey. Hmm? Can you pet my head? Oh. Oh. Okay. Alright. Okay. Alright, Sarah, I see you. <laughs> you. You want me to spoil you? Pretty please. I smile and start stroking her head softly. This is probably one of the best ways to put somebody out. If you just start stroking their head. I've seen it I've seen it firsthand on two on at least two different occasions. Like this? Yeah. She closes her she closes her eyes again. <laughs> Didn't something like this happen before, when we were children? Eh? Did it? Don't you remember? I think it was just an, like a night just like this. Ah! You did the same that time. <laughs> you look like a brother. A brother? Ah. I could see that. <laughs> Why? You want me to call you Oni-chan? <laughs> I don't know, Sayori. That that might be a little. That might be pushing it. Uh, somehow that doesn't fit you. 
Eh? Mimi? I continued patting her head. <laughs> I continued like this for some time. Sari's eyes are now heavy. And she falls asleep. She has been a little down since yesterday, but why? I don't know. I just keep staring at her sleeping face. Hmm, marshmallow. It seems that she's not having a nightmare this time. Oh, give it some time. You don't know, it might make a resurgence. I stand up and start heading to her door, but... Why? Every time I take a step further away from her, I feel a chill down my spine. Like, I shouldn't leave. Kellen, hmm, marshmallow, sticky. Don't be stupid. She's already she's already sleeping. It's not like there's a place for me to sleep here. So you can sleep on the floor, make a pallet, or you can be daring and get in the bed with her. I don't know. You two are friends, so I guess it wouldn't be weird. If something happens, I'll come running here. Yeah. But what if it's too late by the time you get there? You ever thought of that, my friend? But somehow, I couldn't sleep quietly that night. Oh boy, more uh, more Monica and corruption time. Kellen, Kellen, wake up, Kellen, before it's too late. Kellen, please. Please, Killen, please! Wake up! Save her! Before it's too late! Killen! Why? Why can't I reach him? Please! Please! Killen! At this rate. Killen, wake up! 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 Ha! 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 Please! I don't want to lose her again. She doesn't deserve this. To suffer like that again. Please! Killin! Monica's doing her- Monica's doing her absolute best. Oh. Oh boy. It's no use. You will not reach him. Y you again. You again. I won't let you interfere. Neither you or those outsiders will get in my way. I will have Killen for me alone, and I will do anything to get him. Monster! What are you going to do? What are you going to do with- What are you going to do to her? Gah! The pain is unbearable. The corruption takes you by my, my hair and faces me. Something far, far worse than you can imagine. This time, not even death will save her. Oh god, is she gonna put her in stasis? Is she gonna put her to persistent death of the game to be like a ghost? No. Why? Why are you doing this? Love. Kill him will be mine. That's not love. That's insanity. You're the one to talk. Ah! Now, what should I do with you? I have to make sure that you don't do any funny, any funny business. Oh god. <laughs> oh god. I guess a bit of punishment is necessary. This will be very fun. <laughs> no! Wait! No! Oh god. No, Monica. Oh god, Monica. Day 4. Oh, Monica looks so beautiful. Oh, that looks so sinister. Oh my god, Monica's cleavage is showing. I'm scared. Oh god, the room! Ah! No! God! <laughs> I'm already prepared to go to school, but... Something is wrong. Everything is too... quiet. Not even birds are in the sky. 
Oh god, everything's going to hell. It feels like the world has died. And the whole atmosphere is giving me chills. I don't like this. Yeah, there's something very wrong here. You can say that again, my friend. That's the freaking understatement of the year. Look, you can't even see anything! Huh? Yeah. Huh. <sighs> it's the white-haired girl again. She's in front of Sayori's house, but... She looks like she's in pain. She's grasping her head strongly while grunting. Gah! She falls to the ground. This is bad. I run to her. Hey! Are you okay? She doesn't look at me. She's just squirming in pain on the ground. I didn't see that Sayori's house door is open. Was this girl inside her house? Anyway, I can't leave her like this. I'll get Sayori and then take this girl inside. Wait here. I'll be back in a moment. Wait. I didn't get what she said. I just rushed inside Sayori's house to go upstairs to her room and knock on Sayori's door. Sayori! Sayori, wake up! I need your help! There's no response. Is she still asleep? Well, she went to bed a little late and I don't know if she woke up again. Something tells me Sayori's not going to be sleeping. Something tells me something far worse happened to Sayori. But this can't wait. Sorry, Sayori. I opened the door. Sayori- She! Fuck! <laughs> Fuck! I, was, I called. I was like, something. That, something tells me she's not gonna be sleeping. I didn't do it. Fucking corruption, bro. This, bro, this is some bigoty bullshit, bro. What? Sayori? Why? Why? Sayori! Just doesn't say anything. Just, everything's just going to hell in a handbasket, my boys. It's just some gruesome shit. She was fine a couple hours ago. She was smiling. No! I hug Sayori's body so hard that the rope breaks and she falls on the floor. I just lay on top of her while her, my tears fall, from her, fall on her face. She's just... Just gibberish. This can't be. This can't be! I thought she was a little sad this week, but... Where'd it come to this? I didn't know it was this bad. I mean... We were talking just a few hours ago. I hug her cold body again. But her lifeless eyes keep looking to the ceiling. I hear footsteps. Unsteady footsteps. This white haired girl. The white haired girl came in. Her expression is a mixture of pain and sadness. She's murmuring something. I can barely hear it. This is worse than I thought. This world is crumbling. The script is destroying itself. At this rate. Gah! She suddenly lets out a horrible scream and falls to the floor, grasping her head. What is happening? No! It can't be! Uh-oh. Did Kanika get her way? Oh god. Kanika's getting her way. Kanika's making shit pop. I'm prepared to go to school. I sigh while looking out the window. The day is clear, but the recent events are the ones that are making me feel blue. I can feel that something in the club is wrong, but I can't put my thumb on it. I wait for Sayori in front of her house. 
She hasn't been replying to my messages or calls. She really is a heavy sleeper. I'm just fiddling with my phone until I see Sire come out of her house. But... <laughs> Bro? Bro, wait! <laughs> Bro, I'm scared! I don't even think- I don't even think this is Sayori. This is Sayori question mark. This is Sayori question mark now. As far as I'm concerned, the real Sayori died yesterday. Hi, Kellen. Hey. She's wearing a red scarf on her neck. Well, I guess she's cold today, but... Sayori, are you okay? You look a little pale. Hmm? Huh? Don't worry. I just had a problem sleeping yesterday. More nightmares? Yeah, but it's okay. Uh-huh. Smile. If you say so. <laughs> even if I say it, even if I say that, I can tell something is wrong with her. She looks lifeless. I don't like this. Wait, did Kanaka turn her into a zombie? And then the scarf is around her neck to hide what happened to her? If that's so, Sayori's a zombie. That's rare. That's wow. This game is twisted. <laughs> hmm. It's the white-haired girl. She's coming toward us, but she stops in her tracks when she looks at Sayori. It can't be. The look on her face gives me chills. She then takes a deep breath and clenches her fist. So that's how it is. She walks away while muttering something. I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> I don't understand what happened. Bro. Bro. There are things that are going on right now that are beyond your comprehension. Like I said, I'm at this point I'm 110% certain that this thing on the screen is a zombie. Sorry takes me by, my, by the arm. Let's go, Kaylin. She pulls me to the school. I look at her like, I, yo, the idea of a zombie Sayori, that's scary. It's just being puppeteered by Kanaka, Monica question mark. Dude, that, dude, that is beyond creepy. After classes end, I head directly to the club room. As I enter... I can feel the atmosphere getting heavier in just a second. Yuri glances at me and then buries her head in her arms, trembling. And Natsuki is ripping sheets of paper after looking at me. Yuri would normally greet me as I enter and Natsuki is completely avoiding my gaze. I don't want to think it's worse than yesterday, but... Hi, Kellen. How have you been? Monica instead greets me cheerfully. Hey, Kanika! Fine, I guess. What's wrong? Something happened? Y you could say that. I don't think I should tell Monica. It'd only worry her. I don't even know what the other girl's circumstances are, so... No, it's nothing. I'm just tired, that's all. Didn't sleep well? Kinda. I see, I see. The sign right didn't come with you? Hmm? Uh, not this time. I came directly here from my class, so... As I say that, Sayori question mark enters the room. Hi, everyone. She enters cheerfully as I just look at her. Is something wrong, Kellen? No, nothing. The more I look at her, the more I feel that something isn't right. You don't say! But I can't directly point that out. <laughs> now that I remember... Sayori, Maki said they wanted to see you today. <laughs> Sayori question mark's like, huh? Don't worry, Killen. I don't need to. I'm okay after all. <laughs> but... Killen, you should listen to her. <laughs> right? <laughs> He's like, yeah, yes. Yeah! Good boy. <laughs> Someone is knocking at the door! 
<laughs> this is not okie dokie. <laughs> it's Maki Sensei. <laughs> oh god, this is not okay. Nothing in this mod is okay. Oh my god. Oh god, this mod is not okay. Oh. Oh god, you have you have the devil, her puppet, and the caring mother. Oh god. It's Maki Sensei. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Maki Sensei. Is Sari Chan around? Uh yeah. Do you need something from me, Sensei? Can you please can you come to my office? I'd like to talk with you. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, no. I can't. I'm actually very busy right now. I will like if you don't bother me. Oh. And <laughs> Yuri's like, huh? <laughs> and I'm like, huh? <laughs> Sorry, but that won't do. This is very important. <laughs> Leave me alone! Get out! Oh, god. <laughs> Whoa! oh my god! Oh my god, this is so scary! Everything's going to hell! Kanika is just controlling Sari as a puppet. As a zombie. Oh my god. Oh my god, bro! Sari's scream startles everyone, especially me. I'm sure I've never heard her scream like that. Actually, it's the first time I've seen Sari acting like this. Maki-sensei is surprised too. She's mutter murmuring something. So, it's as Kari-san said. It's as Kanri-san said. Maki-sensei, aren't you being a little too pushy? She just smiles. Sari-chan? Ugh! <laughs> Monica's like, what? <laughs> <You're>... <laughs> Monica, Monica's like, what? How dare you? Maybe so nice to come with me. And Sarah's like, oh. yes. What did you? Well then, I'll borrow Sari Chan for a moment. Evil Club President Son! <laughs> Get called out, Kanika. Get freaking called out. Oh my god. <laughs> Evil club president Sod. I told you guys before, this character, this character right here, this character right here, this shit right here, my nigga, this shit right here, fucking terrifies me. Fucking terrifies me. But Maki saw just flexed so hard just now. This is, one, this is one of the biggest flexes of Doki Doki. Like, Kanika thought she was so slick using Sari as a puppet. But then Maki Sensei was like, nah, fam. You think you're a bad bitch? No. I'm gonna take control of your puppet. How about that? <laughs> Monica's just like, Kanika's fuming. <laughs> Maki Sensei takes Sari with her. I don't know what happened, but Monica looks really, really pissed. Killin. Huh? Wait, please stay like that. Yuri is behind me. Even if I can't see her, I can feel her nervousness, her fear. Yuri? Is it the same as yesterday? I'm sorry, I, I don't even know what's happening to me. <sighs> It's okay. So, what is it? <laughs> it's about Sayori. She seems different from the last time I saw her. So you noticed too? I don't know. Yesterday yesterday she wasn't like that. Did something happen? Yeah, you could say that. You could definitely say something happened. Uh, a lot happened actually. My head hurts. Did something happen this morning? Ah uh, yes, now he's starting to remember. What was that? That didn't happen. What am I thinking? No nothing comes to mind. 
I see. Could you talk with her? Maybe you could figure something out. And could you say the same to Natsuki? I'm sure she feels too that something is out of place. But I think she won't let me approach her. <laughs> Are you having problems with Natsuki too? Yeah. Huh. What is happening to us? It's like something is trying to take you away from us. It's all Kanaka's fault! You can thank Kanaka for that! Kanaka is being the puppeteer manipulating everything. Even though my point for the first episode still stands. If Kanaka is this powerful and can manipulate all the other characters except for Maki Sensei and Kanusan, Kanaka could just make it so um, MC just falls in love with her and just doesn't have to worry about everyone else. So really, her messing with the girls is... There's really no point to that. Yeah, Yuri, you may be right. I don't know. Sorry. I was just rambling. It's okay. Thanks. Sorry. I can't even look at your face. Wow. Yuri walks away. She looks really hurt. At this time, I would normally read with the girls. Today we should finish the story. Now that I think about it, I've never read with Monica. I wonder if she wants to read something. After all, it seems she's the only one who tolerates my presence. I approach her. Monica? Monica? <laughs> she's like, go away. I'm busy trying to get control of my puppet back. She's not responding. And she's not sleeping. I shake her a little. Oh jeez. What was that? Kellen. Monica opens her eyes. Sorry. I'm having a really bad headache. Like someone was... Like someone was trying to enter my head. Oh, I wonder if Connery, son, or Maki Sensei are trying to interact with Kanaka. That's oddly specific. Sorry, Kellen. I'll go to the infirmary and try to stop someone interfering inside me. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, it's, uh,. It's not Maki Sensei Kari saw it, it's actual Monica trying to messing with Kanaka. What? It was nothing. Don't worry. Oh uh, yeah. Also. It seems you're trying to get closer again with the other girls. That won't do. You're mine after all. So here. Here's a little present. I hear a loud thud where Yuri and Natsuki are. Also, forget this. Um, what happened? Did you say something? No, nothing. I'll probably come back later to share our stories. Well then. Monica leaves. Just, just, just look at gangster as fuck. Kanika has no chill. She, she dropped the whole Monica persona and everything. The mask is gone. Kanika is just all, it's just Kanika now. Just Kanika. That was weird. Well then, who should I spend my time with? Well, we gotta spend time with Natsuki, because we, we gotta finish that story, bro. Uh, we, we gotta know what happens with, uh... In the Heartless manga. <laughs> Yuri and Natsuki are talking. I approach Natsuki. Not... Yeah. Eh? Oh no. Oh no. She's trembling and clutching her fist with a lot of strength. So much that she's drawing blood. The look on her eyes. The look in her eyes. She's very angry. <laughs> she's about to knock... She's about to knock us the heck out. She just takes a book out of her bag and shoves it against me. She doesn't even say anything to us. 
and storms out of the classroom. We don't even get dignified with the response. You... She suddenly jumps at my call and looks at me. Like a deer caught a headline, she looks freaking terrified. That look, she's terrified. Her fear is clearly visible. She just runs out of the classroom. What just happened? Also, what happened with Yuri? I just talked with her a couple of minutes ago. The book she gave me. It's the manga that we're reading. It seems she wants me to read it. It seems she wants me to read it alone this time. I guess I should. Once everything goes back to normal, I'll talk with her about the manga. We're about to finish it anyway. I sit in the corner I sit in the corner of the club. I'm alone, so everything is very silent. I concentrate in just a moment. Now, even with the soul of her daughter recovered, there is no happiness, just emptiness. The devil just disappeared and left her alone. She just fell to her knees and saw how the soul of the one she once loved has just vanished as well, and she felt nothing. With anything left now, not even, I think with nothing left now, not even a reason to live, the heartless mother started wandering aimlessly. One day, the heartless mother found a weak girl lying on the ground. She was very wounded. So much it was incredible that she was still alive. Huh, I wonder who this is. For some reason, she started treating her wounds carefully. She didn't know why she was doing it. She remembered how she treated her daughter before, but still no emotion came. The weak girl was directly staring at her while being treated. It was like she was looking at her soul. And out of nowhere, she reached into her chest and extracted her beating heart. It was beautiful and beating vigorously. It had the force of life that she lacked and offered it to her. You need this more than me, she said. When she received her heart, tears of emotion ran through her face. She could feel again. Even the sadness of losing her daughter felt refreshing. Also the happiness of her recovering was priceless. But now, the girl was now emotionless. Her dull eyes told her that she was em as empty as herself was before. But somehow, the girl reassured her that it was the right that this was the right choice. However, she couldn't just leave her alone. She had nothing anyway. So, she had nothing anyway, so the now recovered mother decided to, s to stay with that girl as long as it was necessary. The debt she had with her was probably eternal. Somehow, she knew that she would be alongside her for a very long time, and she wasn't upset about that. One day, a witch appeared before them and confirmed that the heart that she possessed was not only cursed, but also immortal. As long as the mother wanted to live on, the heart would stay with her, and the curse would be contained. However, even with that, she decided to stay with the immortal girl. And with that, I'm done. Huh, I wonder who the mother and the cursed emotion this girl is. It, it it boggles my mind to wonder who these two characters might be. I wonder if we've seen these characters before on other occasions aside from this story. It was a very interesting story. But I feel like it was telling someone else's life. Like a biography. Huh. Whatever. Even though I finish... No one has come back, and I have been like, I have been here like an hour or so. Hmm, there's nobody around. I wanted to ask someone, but... Ah! Hey! Hmm? You are... Ah, right. You were in the literature club. Is something the matter? Yeah. Have you seen Natsuki, the short pink-haired girl? Natsuki... If I'm not mistaken, she was heading to the rooftop. The rooftop? Did something happen? I don't know, but she was very angry at something. Yep, she's angry at me. I see. Thanks. I start heading there. Hmm. That should be enough. Should be enough what? Conry, why aren't you telling us? Conry? 
I arrive at the rooftop. There's nobody here. Someone is behind. Someone is behind there. Natsuki? <gasps> Just as she heard my voice, she slammed her fist loudly against the wall. Now, every time you talk, but when you get near me, an incredible rage fills me. I can't stand your voice or your presence. If this time is worse, she's going to do something drastic. Are you still there, Kellen? I am. The thing is, a whole wall is between us. Thank goodness no one's here, because this would be more awkward than it is. She knows I'm behind her. Oh. Da, 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 da. Ah. At least like this, nothing should happen. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> Natsuki's starting to cry. Sorry. I'm sorry, Kellen. I can't with this wrath. I feel like I just want to tear you apart. Even though you've been nice to me. You even know my secret and how screwed up I've been recently. You still talk to me. To this wicked me. She just keeps sniffing. <laughs> this hurts me. You must think I'm such a horrible person. <laughs> Why is this happening? I just wanted to talk to you. But this wrath overtakes my feelings. Her feelings? Huh? I wanted to be closer to you. To be friends. To be more. But... I'm sorry, Kellen. Now she's really crying. And talking to her might just make her more agitated. What the fuck is this? Natsuki is bearing her feelings to me, and I can't say anything? This is a curse. My chest hurts so bad it's suffocating me. I have the manga still in my hands. I take a pen and write something on the last page, and silently give it to Natsuki before leaving. Huh? What? I too wanted to be closer to you. Sorry I can't say it, but at least keep in mind that I don't hate you. Kellen. Fuck Kanika. Fuck Kanika. Fuck Kanika with a 20 foot dildo. Kanika, you have so much to answer for. I hate I hate Konica, bro. I come I came back to the club. <laughs> what the hell? What happened with Natsuki? This curse is trying to keep me away from her. Huh? Oh, it's the puppet. It's Sayori. Yeah. I still feel she's odd. Hey, how'd it go? I think it went well. She, see she seems a little down. Did something happen? I don't know. But... Killin, what do you think of me? What? Have I been... weird recently? Yes! Yeah! I see. What did Maki-sensei tell you? Why is she smiling? I don't remember. Rather, I don't remember anything since today's very early morning. When you came to my room. What? Then... And what about this morning? Did something happen this morning? What? Nothing really special, but earlier, I mean, you were pretty mean to Maki-sensei. I don't really remember. What? Also, I feel like 
I'm not myself. What do you mean? I don't know. The last thing, the only thing I feel is... cold. I take her hand. Also, oh, I just noticed that her figure... Her fingertips are blue, either that or that's shading, but I'd love to say her fingertips are blue. Whoa, she's really cold. What's happening to me? See, sorry, the thing is, is that you're not really you. You're, you're a shell of yourself. You're being a, controlled as a puppet by evil entity who's trying to F with us. So... You're not really you. Um, you're 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 a zombie, a puppet, a shell. And probably when you find that out, it's not going to end well. I would like to know that too. Everything has changed, hasn't it? Since you came here, everything changed. But if I were to be honest, everything is more fun now. What? Doesn't look like that to me. Yuri is scared of me. Natsuki wants to destroy me. You're a zombie. And Kanika is just being scary as fuck. So. Why? You can't. You can't say it's more fun with such a sad expression. Eh? She puts her hands on her cheeks. How strange. I was trying to smile. I don't even feel happiness? What is this? Sayori? Oh. Kanaka just teleported. Kanaka just teleported into the room. <laughs> that won't do, Sayori. Monica. You can't think like that. I don't know what that false teacher told you, but... Oh, <laughs> Kanika just came back. She's like, I'm taking control of my puppet again. <laughs> Aha. You shouldn't be thinking such complicated things. <laughs> You're right, Monica. Sorry, Kellen. I was just being weird. Don't worry about me. Yeah, okay. Something is definitely wrong. If the MC didn't figure that out before, he should totally figure this out now when Kanika is sitting here manipulating Sayori in real fucking time. Well then, why don't we call the other club members and share our stories? I'm not in the mood for that. With everything ha that, that has happened today, I... Sorry, Monica. I don't feel very good right now. Can I go home early? And she's like, what? No, you can't go home early. Sure. Sorry for just leaving like this. It's okay. If you feel unwell, then there's nothing to do. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> the Sayori is just is dead. Damn it! Oh boy! Like I said, the title of this episode is Everything is Going to Hell. <laughs> that is not even going to hell and back, it's just going into hell and then further into hell. Just, everything is just unraveling. And it's all Kanika's fault. I repeat, it's all Kanika's fault. Damn, I haven't been sleeping since I came back. <laughs> it's very late again. Has Sari come back yet? It doesn't seem like it. Huh. That again. Is it possible? I don't even know what to think about it. Let's check, just in case. <laughs> but how would he check? Wouldn't Kanaka have, like, gotten rid of all the evidence that Sayori, you know, did the thing? I'm in front of Sayori's house. 
just like just like last early morning, but there are no lights on. Sorry. Actually, you know what'd be twisted if the real sorry was still was still in her room, and the, the sorry question mark we can see is just a dead puppet. Well, not a dead puppet, just a puppet created by Kanika. I would say that would be even more twisted. Well, actually, that would be the same amount of twists. If, if, it would be the same amount of twists, actually. Point being, it would still be twisted. Sayori. Nothing. I'll try entering, then. Where are Sayori's parents, by the way? What? A chill runs down my spine just as I enter. I can't find a light switch. It's very dark. I use my phone light then. Before I know it, I'm in front of Sari's room door. For some reason, I feel sick just looking at this door. I knock. No response. I gently open the door. The room is glitched by all get out. There's no one. But just staying ins inside this room is making me feel unwell. Like something is not right. It doesn't seem like Sayori came home yet, and it's pretty late. Huh? This is... A rope? It's been torn off. The other part is... Hanging from the ceiling. It's like, so it is true. Impossible. Sayori wouldn't do that, but she did. Not by her own doing, mind you. What? There's a dried something on the floor, and on the rope. It's red. It can't be, right? Oh, but it is. Oh, and hello, Puppet Sayori. It's Sayori. Hey, Sayori. Um, sorry for intruding. I was just nervous. Yo, dog, I'm scared. She doesn't even say anything. Sayori? She just walks past me silently, and she just sits against the wall. She's not moving. It's almost like she's not even breathing. Sayori? Sayori! No answer. I approach her and touch her hand. She's very cold. Her face is cold, too. And then he's going to take the scarf off, and he's going to see what really happened. I don't like this. Also, I feel something is wrong with the scar. As I try to remove it... What? I can't move! It was a trap. <laughs> Kellen... What? Someone is behind me! You can't do that, Kellen. It's still too early. What? What's this person talking about? Just go to sleep, Kellen. The time where we will be together is near. What? Kanaka. Play no games. Kanaka. F the people over. Kanaka. Gah. Damn it. Murderer. I hate you. It's your fault. You deserve death. I misjudged you. You killed me. Murderer. I hate you. I'm, it's your fault. 
die. You're the worst. You killed me. I misjudged you. Murder, I hate you, it's your fault. Die, you're the worst. You killed me, I misjudged you. Leave me alone. What else do you want? Is this suffering not enough? Die, 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 die. Murder, 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 murder. Hate, 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 hate. Kellen. I feel like Monica's about to crack, dog. Monica's dead ass about to crack. <laughs> Aren't you tired? You should stop fighting. The nightmares are becoming more frequent. Your ghosts are angrier every time. Damn it. If only I... Hmm. Also... I've got to say, you don't look half bad like that. Gah! <gasps> Look at my hands. The corruption is starting to take over my body. Even my thoughts. At this rate... At this rate, everything will be back as it was before. You can't stop it now. It's just a matter of time. However, I can feel it. The Outsiders are planning something. To think that the blonde cow would snatch the orange-pink head from my control. Orange-pink. <laughs> Even it was for a moment. Whatever. It won't matter in the long run. Monica just doesn't say anything. Well then. Time to prepare everything. Sayori! Everyone! I'm sorry. Kellen! Poor Monica. Monica's just a. What can Monica do, man? Monica's just trapped in the shell of herself. Oh, and Kari. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Kari's gonna get got. Alright, well, I think this is as good a place as any to wrap up this episode here, because, my god, a lot happened today. I let my emotions get the better of me, I'm sorry, it's just that this this was a very intense episode. I, boy. Wow. I mean, I'm going to keep going, the grind never stops, it's just like, wow. This is probably hands down the most impactful episode of this series to date. As your bloodfall, my guy, you are hands down an amazing storyteller. I've never played, never have I played a mob before that made me feel like this. So it's the just the existential terror and just the fear, the paranoia is just is just incredible. So my hats off to you, my good friend. Also, thank you for stopping by. That that meant a lot to me. In any case, this for real. This is fun. It's your boy Jake Killen. Ciao for now. <laughs>